Yep. Got another underwater intake we have to inspect. We're gonna go through that concrete right there to get into the water. Actually, it's kind of a lie. You gotta swim into it through that entry panel. And go inspect it today. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now we've got another salvage job or slash intake inspection to do. And of course I've already showed you the intake during the teaser. It's inside this building here. But we have to go through this little access port, swim all the way up in underneath all this into the building, do an inspection. We've actually done this video several times before. We've showed you in the past how we get in there um but uh it's a never-ending thing it's an annual job it's actually a biannual job we do do it a couple times a year where one time we'll inspect it one time we'll go in and we'll clean it out there's actually another inspection or another intake right over there that we've got to inspect it's actually a pretty easy one and then we've got to go down the drain pipe itself which is about right there about 23 foot deep and actually inspect the drainage pipe too um, so we got a lot of work to get done today. I'm going to kind of walk you through it and hopefully you guys will learn a little something. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about where we're diving at. This is a 14 acre lake or pond that is used for fire protection for this particular business. And basically they have several different intakes that pull the water in, goes through their sprinkler systems and that's their fire protection. And every year we have to go inspect the intake systems and the drain. The drain is used to keep the uh, lake from overflowing and overtaking the dam itself. And so that's, that's basically what we're doing here. Um, now we do have to swim all the way across this thing multiple times to get to each location. It's actually easier for us to do that than to get out and to try to walk it um, each time or each location. So we're going to go ahead and start with the drainage inspection first and basically what we have to do is go down to the bottom of this lake which is 23 foot deep and locate the drain itself. Now this pipe that we're following down, this is what actually controls the drain. It's a butterfly valve down at the bottom and it's got a grate that comes up over the top. So we're checking all the couplings on the pipe. This is how it's controlled, the opening and closing of it. And we're checking all the bolts, making sure the couplings are good, making sure all the connections are good and just doing uh, an inspection. Basically an inspection for what we do is just visual. We go down, we film it, we check all the bolts, make sure there's not too much rust, make sure nothing's uh, broke or severed off, anything like that. And then when we get to the drain, what we're looking for, of course, is debris. Um, now it looks like we're kind of doing this fast. Well, we are. There's actually two of us. So I'm actually checking one side. Uh, there's four bolts that hold each coupling together. I'm checking one side. The other diver's checking the other side. And then uh, we're, we're actually just looking at the upper side of the coupling on our way back up we will inspect the um, the opposite end of it or the opposite side so we're just checking going down we'll check coming back up each coupling and then of course like I said once we get down to the grate we're just looking for debris we're looking to make sure that the butterfly valve is open um, and we do this sometimes with the drain open sometimes we do it when it's closed sometimes we do it when it's open and so one of the biggest concerns that we've face or one of the biggest concerns we have to think about is differential pressure. If you don't know what that is, basically in short it's delta P. This is where divers can get stuck to the bottom, whether it's in a swimming pool, whether it's in a water tank, uh, or in this case it's a lake. We really truly have to worry about delta P and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on in this video too and how we how we overcome that a lot of times, but uh, it is a major concern that we have to worry about when we're down there. So now we're getting closer to the bottom. There you can see the grate. And this grate is nothing more than just 
a cover that covers up the drain. Now the drain is actually closed at this point in time. You can see all the silt, all the mud that's in there. But what we're also looking for, of course, is big, heavy debris. Now you will notice it just went blacked out conditions. It's very dark down there. If you so much as even touch the bottom, you're going to get it stirred up. But we can still do a thorough inspection uh, with the valve closed, with them being no suction. I can actually reach down in there to inspect how deep the silt is. The drain is roughly about six to ten inches down below the silt line itself and then of course the silt here is about another six to ten inches um, on top of it. So it's quite a bit of build up here. They've actually not been able to drain here recently uh, so it's got quite a bit of silt but we also searched around it. We did a quick 360 looking for any heavy debris and then we start our ascent back. Now on the way back up you can see we are searching or doing inspection of the um, backside of those couplings. We inspected the upper side on the way down. We're inspecting the lower side now. And like I said, we're just looking to see. Uh, some of these couplings, you'll notice that the bolts uh, do appear to be rusted. Some, of course, are still nice and shiny. Uh, we do replace these from time to time. If we come across one that's uh, not good, we will report that to the uh, company or the facility that we're doing the inspection for. And of course, they'll get us some and we'll go down and we'll replace it for them but we're just making notations of everything as well now i will come across the pipe here in just a minute you'll see where rust is just breaking off of it the pipe that you're actually seeing is just the outer sheath of the main um, pipe itself so there's a pipe inside of this pipe that controls that valve down at the bottom it's just basically a butterfly valve so uh, the external rust on this pipe is not that big a deal con compared to what's on the inside now it doesn't mean that eventually it just won't wear out and it's going to have to be replaced but um, as far as what we're looking at here there's no major concern and see here you can see where some of that rust is just kind of breaking off um, and that's given I mean anytime you put metal and water is going to do that. Uh, even stainless steel to some point rust so uh, I've seen stainless rust quite a bit even in salt water and even in fresh water too so but uh, we're starting to get finished up here on this one here you can see that a lot more rust is starting to break off but once again it's not really that major of a concern just because it's an outer sheath now this is the overflow uh, grate here um, that overflow is designed in the event that the uh, turn wheel up top breaks which in this case it is broken I'll show you that here briefly but um, this still allows the lake uh, to flow through the dam itself so that they don't have a flood and take out their facilities as well but that's what that grate there is it's an overflow and all those grates do is basically just um, prevent debris from going through as well um, but we're going to go ahead and move on. This is their diesel uh, intake here. This is their backup. So if their electric pump, which we'll inspect at the end, if their electric pump goes out, then of course we can, uh, they can fire up the diesel pump and still have water to come in. So this is basically their redundant system here. Um, this is pretty easy to actually inspect. Um, we don't really have to raise the screens or anything. It doesn't go very far back. It's only about four foot deep and it's probably only, if I had to guess, three foot back in there so we're just looking at the screens they rarely use this they turn it on every now and then just to test it but they actually rarely use this so um, I don't think in the many years that we've been inspecting for this company that we've ever come across any damage to this one uh, we do have them test these pumps so they'll pump it uh, the diesel and the electric pump while we're there just to make sure and we even open the drain pipe as well uh, just to make sure that it will drain fine while we're there as well but yeah, the diesel inspection, pretty easy to do. And then the last inspection that we're going to do, and that's all what we're really showing you in this video is the inspection part. We're not showing you how we actually do the clean out. Uh, that might be for a video for another day. But this is the electric one. This was the building you saw at the beginning of the video. We're actually going through this channel. This channel is roughly um, maybe, maybe three foot across and maximum anywhere between eight to ten foot deep depending on the water level itself but it's just a big concrete structure and so what we're looking for here is we're looking for all the silt that's on the bottom seeing if anything went through those screens where they had broke open and things like that and then we're going to go in and, and actually inspect the intake and inside of the intake house itself um, 
and we're just looking for damage we're looking for rust we're looking for anything that would prevent this system from operating like i said this is their fire protection this is what the company uses to protect their building in the event of a fire so they need to make sure everything's working and that um, there's no problems with it and that it can have a good suction of water when it's when it's actually on uh, and things like that so here i'm coming up to the intake itself i always run into it because there's almost zero visibility in here so usually my head's the first thing that hits which is another reason people ask why do you always wear a helmet in jobs like this well that's why because uh, i'm constantly hitting my head um, but you'll see really quick we will uh, we'll come up to the grate and I'm going to just do a really thorough inspection of the grate, run my hand all the way around it, make sure there's no debris stuck up on the grate itself. Now it should be noted, yes, we always do a lockout, tag out anytime we do this and we have one of our surface screws up top so that no one else can come in and turn that, that pump on while we're under there. So yeah, that's kind of a given. But now I inspected the grate, we're going to pop up into the little chamber here and you see it's not very big at all, it's only about three foot across. That piece of concrete that you saw at the surface during the beginning of the video, that's how wide it is. It's the same size as that concrete. And of course, I'm going to look up, make sure that the pipe's good, make sure there's no damage to the pipe anywhere, and then uh, kind of complete my inspection here. And then I'll drop back down, signal my buddy that all looks okay, and then uh, we'll head back out to finish up the inspection and then see if there's anything that we need to clean out now I will state we did a very lengthy clean out on this one today uh, unfortunately you're not going to get to see that just because my camera died so you're only going to get to see the inspection in this but these inspections are not hard they're not that difficult to do uh, we're just testing the integrity of the system by running it a couple times and we go in and inspect for debris we look for any damage in the system any damage bolts any damage couplings anything of that sort that's what we're inspecting and then the last thing we do of course is we report it. We report it to the business. We tell them what we found. We show them the same video that you guys are watching now and then uh, they can kind of take that as is and see what they want us to do. A lot of times we do the underwater repair for them. Yeah. So here you go guys. That's what an inspection looks like. We actually cleaned it out for them as well. We took that rake system up in there and pulled all that debris, all that sealed out. Originally, it was about three to four inches. We got it down to basically where you're touching concrete. Now, there's always going to be a little bit of silt that you're never going to get completely cleaned out of there. But all the heavier debris, uh, it's definitely out there. I do think that they've got to get the drain fixed over there, get the turn wheel fixed so that they can get some water flowing. Because just like we saw on the uh, drain pipe down in around 23 feet, you could see that it was just completely covered up in silt. But yeah, all in all, great dive. They're good for another several months and then uh, we'll see how it goes hopefully get, they get that drain pipe fixed and uh, they can start flowing water again thankfully they do have that overflow though which is going to help not create a flood environment here we're going to get geared down go get us some lunch and get out of here but guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you got any questions on work like this drop me a comment down below and i'll try to answer it the best i can Till our next video take care god bless and i'll see you in the next one